Hey guys, it's your boy Tacho here, and we are back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. And today we're going to be doing some builds for the Legendary Edelgard that we got on last night's banner. So Legendary Edelgard is one of the craziest min-maxed units in the entire game. If we take a quick look at her stats, you'll notice that her speed stat is abysmally low. And because of that, they were able to just pump all the rest of her stats into attack, defense, and res. Which is exactly what she wants. She is going to try to be a tanky and offensive unit that can deal tons and tons of damage and also take a hit like a champ. But she's not going to be doing too much in the way of double attacking without outside help. So taking a look at her base kit, her weapon is Aimer and it grants her a flat attack up 3. And it also inflicts attack and defense minus 6 and negates the foe's potential for a follow up attack. Assuming that Edelgard is not adjacent to any allies when she attacks or is attacked. So this is a very powerful weapon on this unit and the closest thing that I can compare it to is the Spendthrift Bow. Because it's just giving her attack minus 6 for the foe and then defense minus 6 as well. So it's like she's going to be hitting harder and she's going to be tanking harder. And then it negates the foe's follow up, so I mean, th this is one of the most uptuned weapons I've ever seen in the game, of course. And on a unit that's already tied for having the highest base attack in the entire game, Aimer is going to be a really strong option for her. Then she's got Bonfire as the special, which is pretty good. I mean, her defense is already sky high, so if she attacks the foes and she gets Bonfire to trigger, she's going to be laying on the pain. Attack and res solo as the A slot passive. Very good option there. If she's not adjacent to any allies when she's in combat, which is pretty much going to be all the time, just based on the way that she's trying to play and the way that her base kit is laid out. She's just going to get attack and res up 6 during combat, which is awesome. Raging Storm, which has to be the most powerful B slot skill in the game, I think. It's definitely up there. I mean, of course, there's tons of contenders in the B-slot passive for the title of best skill. But what Raging Storm does is just completely out of control. It gives her an instant gale force effect if she is not adjacent to allies after combat. Which is, first of all, that's just crazy. Having a special attack built into your B-slot passive and being able to activate it without needing to charge any special cooldown is so insanely good. But that's not even all it does. So if she's in combat against a dragon or a beast type foe, she gets a guaranteed follow-up attack. <laughs> like, how crazy is that? She's got 17 base speed and that's not even an issue for her because against the right types of opponents, she can attack twice and negate their follow-ups. So it's pretty obvious why speed is her dump stat here. And finally, she's got Armored Stride in the C slot. So this is a different take on Armored March. Instead of being adjacent to another armored ally at the start of a turn, all you gotta do is be adjacent to absolutely no one, and you are gonna get one extra move on that turn. So very good movement-based armor skill for armored units, especially Edelgard, who always wants to be by herself when she's fighting, so the rest of her build can start kicking in. And overall, this is a pretty strong base kit. Might not be the absolute strongest base kit that we've ever seen, like some units like Bramimon do have a bit of an edge on her, I would say, as well as Kid Kata. But by no means is this Edelgard base kit bad. It's very powerful, and anyone who summons a copy of Edelgard, you're really not going to have to do too much to make her awesome. And for recommended IVs, I mean, come on, <laughs> do you guys even need me to say this one? Plus attack, like, just go for plus attack. She has the super boon in attack, and if you take plus attack, she's going to tie with Valentine Rudolph for having the highest attack stat in the entire game. So, of course, that is what you're going to want to go for. Now, for the budget build on Edelgard, we are going to replace Bonfire for Gale Force. That is because with Raging Storm, Edelgard is the only unit in the game that can activate Gale Force twice in a turn. And that means she has a potential for 3 attacks. So already this unit is completely nuts just by the basis of being able to do that. No other unit in the game can attack 3 times without dancer support. So <laughs> that's already busted. For the assist we're gonna go with pivot. I actually like pivot on armored units that need to get an extra movement each turn. 
If you set it up right, you can move up to three spaces in a turn with Pivot. The only downside is that using Pivot is going to end Edelgard's turn. So you may need a Dancer to dance on her and then possibly even have a unit behind her who has Smite. So they can just smite her all the way up to the action and have her start going to town. One very big problem for this Edelgard is going to be mobility. Even though she has Armored Stride, that's still really not going to be enough. Armored units are just slow as balls, so it's going to be real tough for her to get into combat and see some action. So when running Edelgard, you totally want to have a Dancer on the team as well as a unit with Smite. So you can just mitigate all of these movement problems that she may end up with. Other options include Guidance Flyers that would be really good for teammates. So just think of some ways that you can mitigate Edelgard's bad movement. And the only other thing we have to do for her base kit is give her a seal. And I am going to recommend Heavy Blade. It should be a no-brainer that Heavy Blade works on this unit. No other unit in the game has a higher base attack than her. And she is tied with Rudolph, so you are always going to activate Heavy Blade, no problem. And that's going to help her ramp into Gale Force, which is really what she needs to do. It's very likely that when Edelgard attacks the foes, she's going to be getting one-shots. It depends a little bit on what mode you're playing in, like if you're in Arena, then you may not get one-shots since there's a lot of tanks in Arena. But if you're playing in Aether Raids and you're running Edelgard on your offense team, most of the opponents you fight are going to be Glass Cannons that are trying to get one-shots and aren't really worried too much about taking hits. So if you're running her against classic Infantry Pulse teams and stuff like that, she will probably be getting one-shots, so... It's going to be real hard for her to ramp into Gale Force without outside help, like with a skill like Heavy Blade that helps her ramp into specials. So you're totally going to want to have that as the seal, and it's just going to make it more likely for her to use Gale Force and Raging Storm in the same turn. So that just about covers us for the budget build. Now for the high investment build, we do have the option of running Heavy Blade 4 instead of Attack and Res solo. So Heavy Blade 4... By sheer coincidence, Duo Ephraim is on the banner too, so you're free to actually have a chance at summoning Heavy Blade 4 to give to her, which wouldn't be a bad idea if you don't mind really investing in Edelgard. Heavy Blade 4 is by far her best A slot option. It's going to give her 5 true damage when she's attacking, and it's also going to give her the special ramping effect. So we're free to change up her Sacred Seal on this build and run something else. I have Quicken Pulse as my recommended option. It's going to bring Gale Force down to a 4 hit cooldown at the start of the turn. So if you smite her at the enemy's face, have her attack once, she's going to be at minus 2 cooldown. Raging Storm is going to activate. You attack another foe, and then she's down to 0 cooldown, and she gets Gale Force, and she's able to attack once again. So that's one way to play it. But there are other support options you can do instead of using Quicken Pulse. So you can free up the seal slot. There is the weapon Grand Scratcher, which is a staff that was on the back time Sakura. That weapon is going to grant minus one cooldown at the start of the turn to the highest attack ally on your team, which is obviously going to be Edelgard since she has the highest attack stat in the game. You can also support her with Valoria if you have Valoria, and that's going to be minus two cooldown count, which is very nice. And there's also Legendary Hector who has Ostian Pulse. And as long as you meet the condition for that, which is essentially just the tactic skill requirement, she will be at minus one cooldown as well. So all those are solid options for lowering her cooldown count at the start of the fight. And if you're going to go with one of those options, then Death Blow is totally going to be your best bet for the Sacred Seal. Just giving her plus six attack when she initiates is going to combo so well with Heavy Blade and the triple attacking that she can do. Defense Smoke is going to be another good option. So once you attack the foes, Raging Storm is automatically going to kick in and you're going to be able to attack again on enemies that have minus 7 defense. So Defense Smoke could be a nice option in place of Death Blow. But Edelgard's potential on the player phase is so bananas that regardless of the fact that she can only move one space a turn in normal circumstances, I still feel like she has a lot of potential. So that just about covers us for the high investment player phase build. And just to wrap us up, we're going to take a look at two different bait builds that you can run. So, the classic bait builds pretty much that all armored units like to go with. 
Distant Counter on one set with Vengeful Fighter, Pulse Smoke, and Distant Defense. Pulse Smoke has become the go-to C-slot passive just to shut down infantry pulse setups. And Vengeful Fighter combos very nicely with Aimer since Vengeful Fighter grants her a guaranteed follow-up, while Aimer is going to prevent the foe's chance at doing a follow-up. Distant Counter, of course, so she can Distant Counter and attack ranged opponents. We have Soul as the special since it's a good healing option, and it does have some nice synergy with Vengeful Fighter. And of course, Distant Defense is just gonna raise her bulk against those ranged opponents. But if you don't like Distant Defense, then Attack Smoke or Mirror Stance would also be pretty good options. And the other build is gonna be Noontime, Distant Counter, Special Fighter, Pulse Smoke, and Quick Repost. So this is the other common armor bait build that we like to run. Quick Repost and Special Fighter is very nice, because Special Fighter inflicts guard and also ramps your special for you. And that means that anytime Edelgard retaliates against an opponent and gets a counterattack, she is going to be using Noontime to the face. So any damage that the foes may have done to her, she's just going to heal it right back. And quick repost for the guaranteed double attacks. So between these two builds, I don't really know which one I like more. Vengeful Fighter, of course, has that synergy with Aimer. But Special Fighter inflicting guard and also ramping into noontime immediately I think has some benefits too. So as far as which one of these bait builds you think is going to be best, that's going to be at your own discretion. Both of them are of course going to be fantastic though and Edelgard's defenses are so insane. With that minus 6 attack she does with Aimer, it's so crazy. Like <laughs> this unit can be a player phase beast or a defensive juggernaut. It's so crazy. She's one of the most perfect units in the game, and really the only thing that I can say that's bad about her is she's an armored unit, and she can only move one space a turn, and she's susceptible to all of those effective against armor weapons, which unfortunately there are a lot of. But Edelgard can totally make do, and she is absolutely going to be a unit to watch out for. So that's going to wrap us up for the builds today. Hope you guys enjoyed the builds and the discussion about Edelgard. And let me know in the comments section what type of build you plan to be running on Edelgard yourself. I'm interested to know how you guys want to play her. And that's going to wrap us up for today. So as always, this is your boy Tacho signing out. And I'll catch you guys again in the next one.